Hey there, I wanted to try a little something new for a while, maybe make it a permanent part of the Begin Within Health show, and that is to do some bonus episodes. So we're going to release these every Tuesday. My hope is that they're going to be a little bit shorter for you, and uh, we're going to still do our regular kind of long form, longer form episode, closer to that 30 minute mark. We'll release those on Thursday. And those will generally be interviews with experts. But what I want to do with these bonus episodes, these additional episodes, is to take some time and spend a little bit of, uh, of time just briefly talking about things that I've learned from the experts that we've had here on the show, things that I've learned um, through practice uh, myself when it comes to health, but then also things that I've learned in working with clients both in and out of the gym for years now, not only with nutrition coaching, but also, of course, with personal training sessions. And um, my hope is that I will be able to distill down some of the more complicated topics that we discuss and that we're going to be able to really key in on some uh, solid action steps that you can take for the week, right? Until we talk again next time. So uh, this will prove to be, my hope is, it will prove to be a really helpful resource for you since I know that so many people in our community um, with Begin Within are either just starting out, right? Just beginning in their, their health journey or they're individuals who uh, maybe like yourself, or I even put myself in this group, people who have health improvement on the radar. It's something that we're always working on. We just need some reminders. We need little nudges to be reminded about the areas that are most important and what are some things that we can really do in order to move the needle in those areas. And as a result, feel better, have a better level of overall health and that would include any of the results that you want to see as well so this first topic that i want to talk about today and you saw it in the title already deals with emotional eating and this is something that comes up often as i'm doing our group nutrition coaching sessions that um most of our members have access to. Uh, we have one of those sessions every single week. And so people come and we kind of take turns. Usually if, if it's a smaller group, everybody gets a turn to spend in the, you know, in the hot seat talking about what's going well, what, what could be going better. And then I'll spend a little time coaching them. And then the whole, the whole group gets to benefit. And of course we have a community that is based on, that's based on trust and collaboration and learning, right? Nobody's there to judge. And so uh, this topic comes up a lot of emotional eating. I understand what I should be eating, right? I understand what I should be doing, but I'm not doing it. And the reason why I'm not doing it is because feelings, <laughs> right? It's, it's feelings, it's emotions that start to negatively impact us. And they, they can positively impact us. Emotions can. And of course, they can have a negative impact as well. And so what I find is most of the people in our community are becoming more and more aware of the fact that there are negative, uh, negative emotions that are negatively affecting their, their results in terms of the actions that they're trying to take right? Great intentions. But at the end of the day, I was so stressed, I did the less healthy thing, right? And maybe that's something that has happened happened for you. I know that it's happened for me and continues to, right? That's, that's just part of life. None of us is ever going to be perfect. We're not going to have a perfect day. There are going to be times when we have some negative emotions. And so people come to, to the session and they want help with it, right? So I'm going to tell you what I share often, very often with them. And it's this is a conversation that, you know, we, we were just having as a family recently. Um, it's very real that we use food to 
deal with emotions, right? Um, and I, I should say this as well, if you're listening, and for you, this this is a very serious problem, meaning that your your health is very adversely affected by the power of the emotions that you have and the way that you maybe are or aren't using food um, in order to to control those emotions if you feel like you need to get some help please do okay we've had some great experts on the podcast before and that's the message that they've had as well so i'm not you know necessarily talking about disordered eating here i'm talking about um the occasional use of food to deal with emotions and kind of feeling frustrated over that over that process okay um like we like we do sometimes we all do here's the thing food affects feelings we have to realize that right so say i've had clients come to me and say i want to get rid of my emotional eating i want to stop emotional emotionally eating um i think that it's impossible to do that because when we eat we have an emotional reaction to it and i don't think that there's anybody anywhere who whose eating isn't affected by their feelings right either they restrict food because of their feelings or and again i'm not talking about you know serious uh eating disorders right but um just uh, a, a period of uh increased stress right some people turn away from food. I don't want it, right? Um, when I'm going through those situations, others turn to it in order to have some comfort. And, and the simple fact is this. What I'm getting at is this. Food affects our feelings. We can't stop that. We cannot stop that. And so it's always going to be there. It's always going to be there when it comes to, uh, you know, eating and emotions, Right? it's going to it's going to affect how we feel. So, it's very difficult to say like how do I get rid of it? How do I quit it? You, we really can't. But here's what we can do. We can add in additional ways to deal, cope, shift our feelings to something more positive, something more productive, something more effective for us we can find other ways or we can find additional ways food is one right that's great but the problem is if food is our only one or maybe even if it's if it's our main one to deal with emotions that's when we can um, start going in the less healthy direction right so what can we do well there's so many right there's so many things that we can do in order to shift this in order to add in more uh, ways to healthfully deal with our emotions and you could probably think of some I mean, I, you know we we've talked about breathing here on on the uh, on the show you know intentional breathing not just respiration but real intentional breathing and how to do that um, that can be uh, an experience that can lower stress for example uh, of course there's movement there's taking a walk that can shift um, emotions, uh, journaling, writing down how you're feeling sometimes has a way of uh, taking away the power of some of those negative emotions, uh, speaking to someone who is a good listener about how you're feeling that can shift it, right? Having a song that you put on or a, a genre of music, right? That that you love to put on. I'm, I love classical music. I love um, piano m- music. And so sometimes I'll put that on. Uh, there's so many things, right? And um, if you're if you're an animal person, there's a whole other world uh, of ways that you can uh, you can shift, right? How you're feeling, perhaps by spending some time with your pet, or watching birds out the window, or getting on TikTok or Instagram and looking at some funny animal videos. Whatever it is, uh, that can create a shift. So, what I'm encouraging you to do. And others who are in our community who are they're they're trying to f- move toward healthy, and they've identified the fact that maybe they're using food more often than they would like to deal with their emotions, is to find some additional ways. Just put more tools in your toolbox 
in order to deal with those emotions. Uh, we can't take food we can't take food out of the toolbox completely because there's no doubt about it. Food is going to influence our feelings, but we can add in more ways. We can experiment with other ways. And we might find that as we do, that food becomes something that we rely on less and less. And maybe we incorporate more and more of these healthier ways uh, to deal with emotions, to shift the way that we're feeling. So the action step, now just in conclusion that I would recommend for you in moving forward from this is just to pick one of the things. Maybe it's something I mentioned. Maybe it's something that you thought of during this conversation. Just pick something and this week practice it. And the way that I would encourage clients who who have brought this up in the sessions is try that thing the next time you're turning to food to deal with emotions. Try that thing first and just experience it. Just see what happens. Take note of it and then use that as a new a new reference point moving forward now that you have that information. Just try it. So that's the action step moving forward from today. Pick that thing, that other way to shift emotions that might be a little bit healthier for you rather than turning to food and put it to use on a consistent basis and then see what happens. I'd love to continue the conversation. Um, I'd love to know what you thought or how that action step goes for you. Um, The link to my Instagram is in the show notes or you can uh, just just search for Nate Slager and uh, send me a message. We'll get the conversation going. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much again for spending time with me here.